Hey, hey, today I'm making over this raw wood dresser that I stripped down to bare wood in last week's video. Here's what it looked like before I stripped it down to bare wood. And here's what it looked like after I stripped it down. It still had a little bit of primer here and there, but the biggest eyesore to me was the broken corners on the drawers. And I hate the way that the bottom of this dresser looks. The little curly cues are just a little bit too much for me. So I got started with this makeover by removing that toe kick or whatever you want to call it. I flipped it on its front and I was able to unscrew the screws that were holding it in place. One screw gave me a bit of a fit though and wouldn't come out. So I grabbed a few drill bits and I drilled it to pieces to the point that I could remove the piece of wood. At first I thought that I might just leave it without that piece of wood, but I honestly did not care for how it looked without that piece. And knowing that the price of lumber is so much higher right now, I opted to cut a new design into the wood. So I freehanded the design that I wanted to cut onto a piece of paper, and then I traced it onto the wood with some transfer paper. I went with a straight middle and a more modern curved edge. Actually, I got the idea by browsing Instagram and looking at the bottoms of the dressers I came across. It was this gorgeous green dresser from the oh-so-talented Meg at Figgy and Poppy Co. that had the design I wanted to recreate on the bottom. Check out her amazing work on Instagram. Then I clamped the wood to my workbench and I used my cheap jigsaw to cut out the design. I cut halfway through and then I flipped the wood around and reclamped it so then I could cut the other half of the wood. And then I sanded all of the edges smooth with my power sander and some 150 grit sandpaper. This 150 grit helped sand out most of the flaws with the jigsaw. And then I came back with a 220 grit just to smooth it out more. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it looks so much better than all of those curves did. Then I got to work fixing the damaged corners on the drawers. This one in particular was really bad. I started by clamping a piece of wood that I had sprayed with cooking spray behind the edge of the drawer. I needed something to keep the back of the repair flat and in line with the rest of the drawer and this was the perfect little solution. Then I mixed up my all-time favorite wood repair product, this Quickwood Wood Epoxy. It's the consistency of soft clay so you can mold it into whatever shape you need it to be. So you just break off however much you need and then knead it together with your hands and mold it in place. You have about 15 minutes to work with it before it gets too hard and then it's completely dry in about an hour. And it's way less stinky than Bondo. Don't get me wrong, Bondo still has its place in repairing furniture for me, but Quickwood has stolen my heart for most of my repairs because of how easy it is to use, it's not as stinky, and I have 15 minutes to work with it instead of like two or three. It's hands down my very favorite way to fill hardware holes when I'm changing old hardware on a dresser too. Anyway, I loosely shaped it into the shape of the corner and I left excess quick wood there so I could sand it down smooth with the rest of the drawer. And so then I was sure that I had enough surface area where it could hold onto the drawer and not fall off. After it was shaped how I wanted it, I removed the wood just so then I could make sure that the back looked good and that it wasn't sticking to the quick wood. Then I clamped that wood back on so it could help support the quick wood while the quick wood dried. After the quick wood was dry, I removed the clamp and used both my sander and 100 grit sandpaper to sand the quick wood down smooth to the shape of the dresser drawer. This stuff dries hard, harder than the actual wood is. So it honestly takes a few minutes to get it all sanded down, especially with this much excess. But I think there is something super, super satisfying about sanding and shaping the quick wood. Here's a quick look at what it looked like after I cut that base piece and repaired the drawer corners. 
All right, now it's time for paint. Yep, after all of that time stripping off the old paint, I'm repainting it. I started by taping the drawers off so I didn't get paint on the sides or insides of the drawers. I didn't use plastic this time because I planned to just paint this one with a paintbrush. Not only is this piece now raw wood, it also has a slick laminate top. Both of these things warrant a need for a primer. The slick laminate needs a little something something just to help the paint stick and the raw wood needs something to help block stains. This bin shellac based primer does both of those things. But it also creates a nice base for the paint and helps the paint have an even sheen in the end. Side note though, my favorite clear shellac primer also would have worked for this. I rolled on two coats of primer letting it dry in between coats for about 45 minutes to an hour. I honestly hate brushing or rolling on primer. I would rather spray it from the spray can, but I have a lot of this primer left in this gallon that needs to be used. So I opted to roll this one on since this piece has straight lines. While I was rolling on this primer, I realized that I did not fill in the old hardware holes. So I filled those in with more quick wood and I waited for the quick wood and the last coat of primer to dry. And then I sanded the quick wood down flush with the drawers with 150 grit sandpaper and then I smoothed it out with 220 grit sandpaper and rolled on another coat of primer over the filled holes. Rolling on the primer leaves behind a lot of texture. So before I started to paint, I sanded the bin primer down with 220 grit sandpaper. Bin shellac primer sends down into like a powder, kind of like chalk paint does, so it's really not that bad to sand. I'm honestly not sure why I chose to sand by hand instead of using my surf prep sander, but that's what I did. After it all felt smooth, I vacuumed up the dust and used a tack cloth to pick up any remaining dust. For this piece, I decided to try my hand with bare chalk paint again. But last time, I sprayed it on, and I had a few questions about how it is to brush it on. So this time, I decided to brush it on. I also decided to splurge on the bare chalk paint brush just to see if it's really worth $30. I had Home Depot mix the bare chalk paint into the color Adirondack Blue from one of their bare color pamphlets. Isn't it pretty? My favorite paintbrushes are around $10 each, so $30 seems a bit crazy to me. But I have also spent a lot of money on a paintbrush that I love, and I love trying out new products, so here we are. Since I hate brush marks, I sprayed the side of the dresser and the brush with some water before I started painting. And then I went to town, working in small sections and brushing the paint in the same direction to help prevent brush marks. I watched for drips all along the way and I applied a lighter coat of paint. When I was done with the first coat, I wrapped my paintbrush in plastic wrap just to keep it from drying out in between coats of paint. And then I let it all dry for the recommended two hours before I painted on a second coat of paint. After the second coat of paint was dry, I wasn't really happy with it. It still needed at least one more coat of paint and I hated how many brush marks I could see in the finish. So I busted out my surf prep sander and some 220 grit sandpaper and sanded the brush marks down. And then I poured some of the paint into a different container so then I could add a little bit of water to thin it out just a little bit. Usually thinning out the paint and misting the paint while you paint can make it so then you don't see the brush marks. So I wanted to try and see if thinning out this bare chalk paint would help it go on without brush marks. And then halfway through painting the third coat with a thinned out paint, I switched to using my favorite brush, the Round Zebra Paintbrush. I wanted to see if the brush marks were caused by the bare paintbrush as well. So I finished off the third coat with a Zebra Round Brush using the thinned out paint and misting the surface and the paintbrush with water as I painted. Like I mentioned earlier, the Zebra Paintbrushes are around $10 each and I love that they come in different shapes to help you with different surfaces that you paint. My favorite of their paintbrushes is the round brush because you can get into all of the details on any piece of furniture with it. After that third coat of paint was dry, I ended up painting one more coat on the edges 
just where I could see where the white primer was still showing underneath just a little bit. After that fourth coat of paint was dry, I sealed the paint with three coats of Minwax Polycrylic and a spray can. I've tried this stuff before and I liked the results I had, so I thought I would try it again to really make sure it's a good alternative to spraying the poly top coat. If you've watched my videos before, you've probably seen me spraying the poly top coat with my paint sprayer, and that's still my favorite method to top coat furniture. But obviously not everyone has access to or really wants to have a paint sprayer. So I've been trying to figure out other easy ways to top coat paint and get a flawless finish. This polycrylic is water-based, so it won't turn your paint yellow like oil-based poly will. But honestly, I would not recommend using this exact product on white paint because I've had it turn my white paint a little bit yellow in the past. That's why I usually use and love the Verithane brand of water-based poly. That's actually what I spray in my paint sprayer, but I tried their spray can version, and let's just say that I wouldn't use it again. After the three coats of poly were dry, my husband helped me put on the hardware. I chose these cheap farmhouse cup poles and we put them on every single place that looked like a drawer front. So that top drawer got five of these poles. We also lined the hardware on the bottom two drawers up with the hardware that was on the top drawer. So then the hardware was in one long straight line all the way down the dresser. And then we flipped the dresser onto its front so we could screw the base piece back on. I just reused the old screws and the holes that held it on before. We also drilled a new hole for a new screw since the broken screw was still on there. Before I share what it looks like now, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps us out and we really appreciate you taking the time to do so. Alright, so here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. Okay, honestly, I don't think that I will ever be brushing on bare chalk paint again, and I really don't plan on ever spending $30 on that paintbrush again. The coverage for the bare chalk paint just wasn't as good as I expected. When I sprayed it on last time, it was great, but this time brushing it on, it just wasn't as good. I don't know if it's the color because I had it color matched. I don't know, but it is cheaper than other chalk paints that I use. And so I guess you get what you pay for here. As for the brush marks, they're still there. And I don't know if it was me or the paint. Overall though, I'm happy with the makeover. I love trying new tools and I love the color and I love how the bottom of that dresser got changed. So I'm really happy with the makeover. I do also think that the Minwax Polycrylic is a great option if you don't have a paint sprayer to spray your top coat. Next week, I'm gonna have a fun new tool to play with. So I'll see you then.